After what has been an incredibly tumultuous journey to release, the latest DC superhero blockbuster, The Flash, has finally hit cinemas, and it brings a boot full of baggage with it, to put it mildly. For those of you who may have been living under a rock the past year or so, The Flash marks the titular speedster hero's first big screen outing after appearances in Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice in 2016 and 2017's Justice League alongside Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill and Jason Momoa. The Flash, aka nerdy 20-something forensic chemist Barry Allen, is played by actor Ezra Miller, and therein lies the problem. Miller has had a troubled couple of years to say the least, starting in 2020 when an alarming video surfaced online that seemed to show the 30-year-old choking a woman at a bar in Reykjavik, Iceland. No charges have been pressed relating to the incident, nor has Miller ever discussed it. Then in 2022, the star was hit with further allegations, arrested more than once and even charged with various crimes, two of which they acknowledged by pleading no contest to the first and entering a plea deal for the other. However, The Flash's release has pressed onwards, despite this controversy that its star has routinely kicked up. But should this be the case? We regularly have debates about art versus the artist and whether or not they should, or could, be separated, and Miller seems to be the latest high-profile example of this, in a line that includes the likes of esteemed director and convicted child rapist Roman Polanski and chart-topping singer and convicted racketeer and sex offender R. Kelly. The actor, who identifies as non-binary, is, without a doubt, fantastic in the dual role as two versions of Barry, the Flash in this multiverse caper. Director Andy Muschietti praised them to the high heavens ahead of the blockbuster's release, saying that they, excelled, in the parts and confirming that he would have no plans to recast Miller should any sequels be greenlit. Having now seen it, the hype is definitely earned, Tom Cruise reportedly rang to offer his congratulations to Muschietti too, as well as new DC Studios co-chairs and CEOs Peter Safran and James Gunn previously voicing their support for Miller. The Fantastic Beast star turns in two completely different and completely believable performances as Barry in a film that, even though it boasts two Batmans, Batman, with Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton, as well as the movie debut of Supergirl, played by newcomer Sasha Calais, is completely dominated by them. Miller is winningly charming in Barry's awkwardness and displays expert comic timing, making you want to wholeheartedly root for the Justice League's underdog. That combined with the movie's humor, love for the DC Universe and a couple of absolutely audacious spoilers makes it a really enjoyable ride. But does supporting this movie come at too high a price, morally speaking? The perks of being a wallflower actor was arrested twice in Hawaii in March last year and charged with disorderly conduct and second-degree assault after shouting and swearing at customers as they sang karaoke at a bar, as well as grabbing a microphone from a 23-year-old woman in two separate incidents. Miller pleaded no contest to one count of disorderly conduct and paid a $500, £398, fine. That same month they also had a temporary restraining order taken out against them after being accused of bursting into the bedroom of a married couple and threatening to kill them. The restraining order case was dismissed by a judge at the couple's request just two weeks later. In April of last year, Miller was also arrested and charged with second-degree assault after being accused of throwing a chair at, and hitting, a 26-year-old woman at a private party, when they were asked to leave. They were also charged over the alleged burglary of home in Stamford, Vermont, where they were said to have stolen several bottles of alcohol in August, to which the star reportedly pleaded guilty to unlawful trespassing in January 2023 in the hopes of having other charges, specifically burglary and larceny, in the same case dropped.
As part of the deal, they are required to undertake random drug tests and continue seeking mental health treatment. That is not everything either, as well as rumors of running a cult in Iceland, Miller has also faced allegations of grooming after the parents of Native American activist Tokata Iron Eyes, 19, filed a protection order against the actor. Now. They accused him of grooming their child from the age of 12 as well as exhibiting, cult-like and psychologically manipulative, controlling behavior, after they first met at Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota back in 2016. After a temporary order against Miller was issued by Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Court, a judge dismissed Tokata's parents' request to make it permanent. Dakota, who also goes by the name Gibson, had previously downplayed any issues with Miller and said that the actor had only provided loving support and invaluable protection throughout this period of loss after they dropped out of college and mourned the loss of a friend. Miller was also accused in June of hosting a woman and her three young children at their farm in an unsafe environment, where it was alleged that there were guns strewn about and that a one-year-old child managed to put a loose bullet in her mouth. No charges have been filed against Miller related to this incident, but Vermont State Police tried to serve an emergency care order to the woman in August, requiring the removal of the children from their mother's care and Miller's home. However, the actor told him the family had left two months prior and not returned. It is so much to take in, and it feels like Warner Bros has somewhat gaslit its audience by managing to not address the situation publicly after Miller finally announced last year that they were seeking treatment for complex mental health issues, saying in a statement, having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental health issues and have begun ongoing treatment. At this point it's not just an elephant in the room but what feels like an entire herd. Miller is clearly struggling and does need to get that help so that they can recover. This piece is not a call to cancel them either, but more about the ramifications of consequences, as right now it appears there have been none. The star avoided taking part in any press tour, the film's promotional activity has been limited overall, save for a brief appearance at The Flash's Los Angeles premiere on Monday night. Having received a rockstar welcome, as reported by Variety, they said to Muschietti, I love you, maestro. I think you are amazing, and I think your work is monumental. They also shared the gratitude to Warner Bros. Discovery CEO David Zaslav and the co-CEOs of DC Studios, Peter Safran and James Gunn, for your grace and discernment and care in the context of my life and in bringing this moment actually to fruition. It's an understandable tactic from a studio surely in panic mode over the situation, that they would want to let the movie speak for itself. The Flash is really good after all, and it represents the hard work of hundreds of other people too, a couple of whom will certainly surprise you. They shouldn't have to unfairly suffer with the work potentially being canned, as happened, awkwardly, with the very uncontentious Batgirl last year, but where is the accountability? I can't help but feel that anyone in a normal job involved with the legal woes of Miller in the past 12 months would have been fired, or at the very least faced serious consequences. But our jobs don't represent hundreds of millions of dollars to a film studio, I guess. It also smacks a bit on Warner Bros side of treating your fans like idiots, hoping that if it's all brushed under the carpet then fans will forget about it and deliver a blockbuster hit. More importantly, what does it say about us as an audience if we do just let it all slide?
If Warner Bros. want to press on with any future Flash appearances from Miller, and even sequels, then they are going to need to address this properly. A sit-down interview with an esteemed broadcaster, such as Oprah, could work for Miller as a one-and-done solution to the problem, clearing the air with fans. If the problem is that the air can't be cleared, well, everyone knows that the resolution to that should be clear and simple. We live in a world where people needn't feel beholden to others to explain themselves all the time, however, when you're the star of a new blockbuster and among the roster of a multi-billion dollar franchise, I'm afraid you do. Metro.co.uk has contacted reps for Warner Bros and Ezra Miller for comment. The Flash is in cinemas now. Got a story? If you've got a celebrity story, video or pictures get in touch with the metro.co.uk entertainment team by emailing us celebtips at metro.co.uk, calling 020-3615-2145 or by visiting our Submit Stuff page, we'd love to hear from you. Tom Cruise surprised the Flash director with personal phone call to praise Ezra Miller movie. I never said